Okay. All right. Well, I hope we're recording. You want some? Let's say hi to our friends, shall we? Do you want to welcome everybody back to our channel? Welcome back to another painting tutorial. And today we are getting festive for autumn and we are painting our pumpkin spice painting. Fun fact, I don't actually like pumpkin spice, but I know a lot of people do and it is very autumn-y. So here we go. And I did promise an autumn themed painting tutorial. So cozy up with your favorite drink. And let's paint some pumpkins. Was there anything else that I was gonna say? And hey, if you like what you see, maybe subscribe to my channel. So first, you're gonna need something to paint on. You can paint on anything you like, but today I'm going to use some canvas, and this is a 16 by 20 canvas. Next, you will need some paint, and these are the colors I'm using today, and I'm using my little paint tray, so you'll need something to mix your paint on. And I'll list the colors down in the description below, as always. Next, you'll need some paint brushes. Uh, these are just some cheap brushes from the local craft store. I may or may not use all of these different brushes, but it's good to have a variety of sizes and shapes um, until you figure out what it is that you like to work with. So these are some of the ones I'll be using today. You'll need a little cup of water or something to wash your brushes out with. You'll want to have some paper towels handy to wipe your paint on. Another thing that is um, you don't need, but is handy, and that I sometimes use, but I haven't really mentioned before. Uh, I do keep a little spray bottle of water, so if I ever need to like spray my paint, especially on the palette when it starts to get dry. So if you have a little spray bottle or something like that you can use, it's also an optional supply that is nice to have. Okay, let's start painting. So for the background, we're gonna start um, Actually, we're gonna start by blocking out where we want our pumpkin to be because we don't really need to waste paint in that area. So I'm gonna use my biggest brush to get started. And this is gonna be super rough. We don't have to be precise. And I'm gonna start with just some um, brown. So I'm gonna start with just, just plain brown for now. And I know I want my pumpkin to take up a good portion, probably like most of the painting. But like I said, this doesn't have to be exact right now. So we're just gonna basically make like a, actually I think I want it to go all the way to the edge. Just like a big oval, really loose, really messy. You can paint over it later. But just to mark the basic area you want your pumpkin to be. And then we're gonna paint all around that. And because this is a pretty textured, painterly type, we're gonna do nice big loose brush strokes. The thing is, even if you want your pumpkin to be bigger, you can paint over the brown, so that's not a problem. Um, but if for some reason you end up making your pumpkin a little smaller, you don't wanna have any canvas showing, so you wanna make sure that this circle represents about the size that you want your pumpkin to be. To add a little bit of color variation, I want to um, make my brown a little darker. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of brown, and grab a little bit of blue, and just mix those together just to get a slightly darker brown. And I want the darker brown to be just up in the corner here and down in the bottom corner here. And again, just kind of really loosely brush that in. We're gonna be adding more layers of like leaves and background color. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush a little and we're gonna start um, blending a lighter color here. Okay, so we're gonna now start in this corner and we're gonna come down towards the, blue, the brown. We're gonna use a light blue, and then when they meet, we're gonna blend them together a little. And this may dry by the time it gets there, but we can always grab a little bit more brown and re-wet it 
and mix them and I'll show you guys what I mean by that when we get there. So first I'm gonna mix up a really light like baby blue color for this corner and we're gonna start moving this down. I'm gonna grab some white and a little bit of just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of blue and that's pretty bright and I'm gonna grab just to give it a slight turquoise, a little tiny bit of yellow and I actually want a little bit of that brown from my brush to kind of gray it out a little. So if you feel like it's too bright for your liking, you can add more brown. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this for now. Start in this top corner. Again, with those same kind of loose brush strokes. And work our way along the edge. We don't wanna meet the brown quite yet because um, we want this edge to be Mostly just that blue. We don't really want the brown to start mixing in yet. I mean, like I said, my brush was a little bit dirty, so there is a little bit of brown kind of graying out this, but that's also fine because I want that. Now, once I start getting closer to the brown, I do want them to mix together a little. And like I said, if your brown is completely dry and it's not mixing, you can always either wet your brush to get them to mix together or just grab a little bit more brown on your brush, re-wet this area, and then help those two colors blend together. And the more you brush them together, the more they will mix. And this is just like a little transition and we can bring this lighter back into the brown. So we do want this brown on the bottom to be almost like a tabletop. So you can see I blended down into it a little and I lost my edge. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that dark brown again. And I'm just gonna go back over this and crisp up this. It's okay if the top of it is a little bit fuzzy and fades, but um, this is gonna be like our, our tabletop or ground plane, something for our objects to sit on. And as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna go back. Again, I mixed up that darker brown. So I'll use um, a little bit of this darker brown that had the blue in it, and also a little bit of the plain brown. I'm going horizontal back and forth, and I kind of want it to be streaky, because if I can get little bits of variation in the colors, it'll look a little like wood grain. Another thing we could do is grab this lighter brown, this raw sienna, just a small amount, and streak some of that in there on purpose to make like a little bit of a wood grain effect. You could even take a little tiny bit of white on your brush, okay, just a little tiny bit, and you could streak that in there too if you wanted to create even more wood grain effect. And we can add shadows and stuff to that later, but that's all I'm gonna do for right now, just to reestablish that idea of like a ground paint. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna work on is this top left area. I wanna have like the effect of some leaves or maybe tree leaves, but kind of blurred in the background. So I'm gonna add like these, a big, uh, again, big brush stroke um, splotches of color, like burnt oranges, maybe a little bit of green and yellow, just to give a blurred background effect, like there's like leaves back there. So I'll start in this corner and we're gonna start with some nice dark oranges and then work our way to yellows and then maybe even put pops of green in there. I'm gonna go down to a slightly smaller brush I have like this size, or you could use something like this size, kind of a larger to medium size brush. You could even use bigger or smaller brushes than this and just maybe play around. Use a variety of sizes depending on how big you want your brush strokes to be. You could even just keep using the same big brush you were using earlier and you may see me jump back and forth between different brushes. And that's just really a matter of preference, but just to kind of play around with different sizes of texture. So to make my oranges, I'm gonna start with a really dark orange. And this is okay if this is still a little bit wet because it's fine for the brown to mix in with your orange. It'll give you like a burnt orange. So we're gonna start with yellow and red. 
to make our orange. The more red you add, the darker it will be. The more yellow you add, the lighter. I'm gonna put a little bit of this light peanut buttery raw sienna in there to give me more of a burnt orange. And I still feel like this is a little bright, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this brown in there too. This is our first transition color from the browns to the oranges, a little bit more red. So I want it to be kind of dark and something between an orange and a brown, like a brownish orange. Don't want too much paint on your brush, so wipe the excess off. And then go ahead and just start up here. And um, again, you don't want to um, go all the way to the corner. We're just going to start adding big chunks. Now, if this doesn't mix with the brown, if it's all the way dry like mine is, you can go ahead with your same brush, dirty brush, grab a little bit of brown on there, and you just let that mix in too. Okay, well, uh, the battery completely died on the camera, so I had to replace it. So, um, time travel, it is now later. So, where were we? Um, we left off adding orange to our background. Then, time. Now I have to, um, so. <laughs> gonna remix my orange uh, because this is now all completely dried so I have to start over but that's fine if anything like that ever happens and you have to like put a painting aside and come back to it good thing about acrylic is now that this is dry I could just paint right over it and it'll be just fine if I do want it to blend like it was before I can just put some more brown and go back and forth so that's what we're gonna do so go back to my brush and I do need to mix some more paint all right, so if that ever happens to you and you have to remix your colors and they come out a little different than they were when you were using them before, that's fine. Um, the more variety you have on there, the better anyway. So I'm gonna continue now just adding some little splotches of orange. And remember, this is just supposed to be like far away, like the blurry vision of like some leaves in the background or whatever. I'll go back and put a little bit more brown on top of that so it blends in a little bit more. Get those little pumpkin spicy flavors kind of colors. Remember to go back and forth between darker browns and lighter and orange. And I'm not changing my, I'm not cleaning my brush um, as I dip into different colors. So they're kind of mixing together. I have a little bit of brown on here, some red and some orange from dipping into the other colors and that's totally fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brush and I'm gonna make some lighter. So this is kind of, um, before my camera shut off, a color uh, that's like lighter orange. I'm gonna go back to something closer to this, more of a yellowy orange. So I'm actually just gonna go to my palette and um, this orange that I'm working with is fine. I'm just gonna grab some yellow to the side here and lighten it up a bit. Maybe add a little bit of that raw sienna in there too, keeping things kind of burnt, like a burnt yellow color. And add some of that in too. And I'll go back and forth between that and the orange. So I don't want that to be too bright. I'm also gonna just go in with my big brush that's clean, it just has some water on it, and just brush over this to blend it together more. I might even add just a little tiny bit of white to this new yellow color, lighten it up even more. And then go in with my bigger brush. Again, no paint on it, it's just a little bit of water that out a little. Okay, so that is what we have so far for the background. So we just have like this nice fall color that kind of blends in and then we have a little bit of the blue sky you know, blue and orange look 
really nice together. So this will be our background. Next up, we're gonna work on the pumpkin, which is the main star of the painting. So I'm gonna go back to this size brush and we're gonna draw our pumpkin shape. So we have a slightly muted color palette, at least on this side, this side is kind of bright. Um, but for my pumpkin, I don't want it to match the same orange colors exactly. So I'm gonna go for more of a slightly muted orange, like the, um, the Cinderella pumpkins. I'm not sure what they're actually called. Cinderella pumpkins, maybe? Um, anyways, you can do whatever kind of pumpkin you want. You can do whatever shape you like. I like the ones that are kind of like shorter and wider. You could do a tall one. You could make it a jack-o'-lantern, whatever you want to do. So this brush, I am going to go ahead and keep using the same pile of orange that I have, but I'm just going to mix a new orange in there. So yellow, a little bit of red, a little bit of this light brown raw sienna, very similar to what we did before, but now I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. It is a similar color to what we had before. Okay, so I already marked out basically where the pumpkin is gonna go, but again, you can adjust the shape. So I'm actually gonna make mine just slightly larger. What I had, I'm gonna make it go all the way to the end here or off the edge here. Again, I'm doing like a shorter, wider pumpkin. And you know, pumpkins don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. So this is my really basic rough shape for my pumpkin. Now, a lot of what I'm gonna do right now is gonna probably get covered up, but I just want to, for my own reference, draw in my little stripes or ridges for my pumpkin, just to give me a reference. And I also want to make sure that I show some of the back of the pumpkin. So I don't want the stem to be coming right out of the top. I want it to come out like around here. So we get a little bit of the back of the pumpkin. So, you know, imagine that area. So that's where my lines are gonna come from. So when we draw like pumpkins that have those ridges in order to make it look rounded, we're gonna make one like center one, this like piece, but we want the, the line on the right to curve towards the right. Right, <laughs> right, and the line on the left to curve towards the left. This is for the center piece. And now each line going out from these are gonna follow that same curve, if that makes sense. I'll show you what I mean. So we have this one here, one here, and so on. And then once we start getting more detail and we start putting shadows in, we're actually gonna um, have these lines going the back of the pumpkin too, but you won't really be able to see them right now because it's all orange. These are just super rough lines. Now add a little bit more red and a little bit of this uh, darker brown. I'm just gonna mix this in here to make it just slightly darker. I'm gonna go over my lines I just drew. because Now that I kind of have them drawn in, I wanna just make them a little bit more obvious for myself. Okay, so now I drew my lines a little bit more obvious, and now we're gonna fill in each of these spaces. I'm gonna keep using this darker orange, and we're gonna start creating our shadows. Now, because we already have the left side kind of established as a darker color, we're gonna put our shadows towards the left, and our lighter colors, like highlights, like our light source is coming from the right. So on each of my little lines that I made, I'm gonna go along the left side and add a little bit extra thicken out this side and actually this whole side here I'm just gonna start filling it in a little 
here we don't really have to worry about it as much on this side. And also the, the bottom will end up being a little darker, generally speaking, because that's where shadows will collect. So now I'm gonna go ahead and lighten this up again. So again, I'm just gonna continue to work in the same pile of orange. If you wanna reserve any of that color for later, you can keep making new piles. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more yellow back into it, some more white. Red. It doesn't have to be the exact same color that we started with before. Okay, so back to the kind of a medium orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the pumpkin. It's still really, really bright and dark compared to what it will be, but we'll start with our darkest or brightest, boldest colors first, and then we're gonna keep adding layers. Don't worry too much about covering up your lines either because you're gonna be doing a lot more to define all of these shapes. I want this pumpkin to be pretty painterly also, meaning brush strokes showing and stuff and looking like a painting. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, so. Okay, so that is the first layer of paint with a pretty dark, pretty bright, orange. Again, I'm going to keep working in the same pile. I'm going to add more white to it. Just keep adding more orange colors. As you add more orange colors, now you could, you could make a really simple pumpkin, just fill it in orange and have darker lines and then put a few highlights and shadows and that would be fine. Um, but if you want one that has like a little bit more kind of like a rustic painterly look. I'm just gonna keep adding as many varieties of oranges as I can into my pumpkin. I'm always gonna be thinking about my light source. So if I'm adding lighter oranges, I want them to be on like the right side of shapes. And if I'm adding darker oranges, I want those to be on the left side of shapes to create my three dimension of my shadows. So you can watch how I do it um, to follow along or you can experiment with your own. And remember, because it's acrylic paint and it dries so fast, if you don't like something you did, just give it a few minutes, let it dry, and paint over it. So I have a little bit lighter orange, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding this in. And because I said I want it to do like that painterly thing, I'm gonna start brushing it in my shapes, um, but not like filling it in perfectly or completely. I'm just gonna start putting some colors in and start adding some texture. Yeah, so you can just keep going back and forth between your light and your dark. You don't have to do all the dark colors first and then all of the light colors, you know. Because we're making this up this week. So I'm putting some dark colors. Dark colors I like to keep towards, again, the right hand side and towards the bottom. So some of my oranges might actually be kind of yellowy, kind of peachy colors. I just want to get as many colors and varieties in there as I can. And you know, let, let the colors show. You don't have to cover up the previous color completely. If you lose your dark lines, don't worry about it. Put them back in.
also don't be afraid to put like some brown in here too for your shadows. So add a little bounce light down here, switch to a slightly smaller brush, start going in with a little bit more detail. And we start getting to our really light, very peachy pale colors for some of our highlights. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick little break from our pumpkin um, interior because I wanna do the stem really quick because that is gonna create some more shadows. Um, so we're gonna add a little stem in, add some more details to that, and then we'll come back to our pumpkin. We'll revisit some more of the details. We'll let this dry, that way we can layer over it with um, more details, like maybe deepen shadows if we need to, or brighten highlights and give it some more contrast. Okay, so for the stem, I'm gonna use an even smaller brush. So I'm gonna make it with some brown. I'll start with just a little bit of brown. Maybe put the tiniest amount of blue in there. Cause we'll go with the dark brown first and then we'll add lighter colors. You can shape your stem however you want. I'm gonna do like a nice cur curvy stem. Remember it's gonna come out of here. So first thing I'll do is just get kind of a basic shape. and fill this in. You could do like a really cool twisted up stem. You could do like a little stumpy stem, whatever you like. Uh, now I'm gonna go and make the brown a little bit lighter, add a little bit of white, a little bit of this raw sienna brown, get a little bit lighter. And I'm gonna add like a uh, texture. So I'm just gonna put some like lines in here with the lighter brown. You don't have to get super detailed with this. You can if you want. And just because I like to be a little extra, I'm gonna make an even darker brown, mixing the brown and blue together again. And you know what, I might actually put a little bit of yellow in that to give it a slightly greenish tint. Cause you know, the stems like grow on vines that are green first and then like kind of turn brown. And sometimes you see a little bit of the green in there. Might go in with just some plain brown. And you don't have to put all this detail in there if you don't want to, I just think it's fun. And I'm doing mostly like dark colors right now. And then you can add a little bit of white to the brown or a little bit of this raw sienna brown, make an even lighter brown. Remember to keep your light colors towards the light source. Okay, so that's my stem shape for now. And I can add more detail to this later if I want. Um, so I'm gonna take a little bit of the brown that I used for my stem and just water it down a little. So just gonna grab some brown and just move it over here. Uh, I'll put a little bit of red in it. But I want it to be mostly brown, like a, a darker color. And I'm gonna put a teensy, tiny bit of blue in it. This is gonna be a shadow for the stem. So I'm gonna add a little water to it to make it a little bit thinner. So it's slightly transparent. And this should be drier now. So remember, our light's over here. 
and our shadows are gonna come towards this way. So I'm gonna make the shadow kind of coming off the back of the pumpkin. And remember that's curved, so we want our shadow to follow the curve. So it's gonna come from the stem here. And basically just be coming off this back curve here. So now I'm going to also take this darker shadow color that I used down here and I'm going to start darkening some of my shadows down here. And only use this really dark color for just like your darkest dark shadows. Like down towards the bottom of your pumpkin, especially over here. And I am purposely leaving a little bit of this light color down on the bottom because it's kind of a bounce light and it helps make it look more round, <laughs> three-dimensional. Again, like I said, I jump around sometimes. Like, Okay, so to make my pumpkin just a teeny bit shiny, and finish off the highlight. And finish off the highlights, I'm gonna add some really bright little spots on there. For the brightest highlights, we're doing white, tiny bit of yellow, and I'm just putting it on top of this orange pile. So I shouldn't need to add red to it, but if you feel like when you put it on there, it looks too yellow, you could add a little red, but I'm kind of keeping it more of a yellowy. This should be the lightest color on your pumpkin, so we're gonna go very sparingly. I'm just gonna with a small brush. Just pounce it on there. And I'm also going to use the same color to highlight the stem. Okay, so part two of the painting, we're gonna add our little cup of pumpkin spice coffee or tea if you want it to be tea. So that little cup is gonna go right here. Cup time. We're gonna keep using this smaller medium size brush, um, this brush, and we wanna clean it off really good because we're gonna do a light color for a cup. You can make your cup whatever color you want, actually, but I want mine to like kind of pop. So I'm gonna just draw it with white first. So the cup shape is gonna come right over here. It's gonna overlap the pumpkin just a little, which means it, the bottom of it needs to be just below the pumpkin. So we're gonna kind of do this. We're gonna start with like a U shape for the bowl of the cup, I guess. So we can fill it in and add details. And then um, if you find that it looks a little uneven or crooked, you can always adjust it and fix it as you're filling it in because it'll probably be easier to tell once it's all filled in. You can also use a bigger brush to fill it in if you wanted. All right, so that's filled in. Um, but don't worry, it's not gonna stay like that. We're gonna start adding some shadows and reflections. So first I'm gonna make kind of like a cool grayish, beigey color. Um, so we're gonna take some white, we're gonna add a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown in here. So 
So we see here, it's almost like a grayish, brownish gray. Take a little bit of this color, and we're gonna start going around the bottom. I'm going to use a smaller brush, this color, and we're just going to go inside of the top here, around like what would be the back edge of the cup. And also the smaller brush, I'm going to go underneath the handle here, or the inside of the handle bottom of the handle. And then we're going to go ahead and make this a little bit darker still. Add some brown. Blue. Slightly darker shadow. Now, just for some fun, we want to put a little reflection in our cup. So we're going to take a little bit of our orange that we use from the pumpkin and we're going to add a little bit of that into the cup on the side. So um, if you have any orange areas still wet on there, you could just use whatever orange is uh, left over. Mine are completely dry, so I'm just going to mix up a little bit of orange. Same brush. It doesn't have to be any particular orange, just any, any orange that you used from the pumpkin. This is just a little bit on my brush, and we're just gonna go along the side here. Keep the paint kind of thin, maybe watery. So we don't wanna paint the cup orange necessarily, but just like a hint of this in here. shadows are still a little light. I'm just gonna add a few more of these like darker, just a little. Because remember our lights on this side, so I don't want to go too dark. I still want my cup to have some definition. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of, just use the plain brown inside of my cup here, just along here to make it look like it has some coffee in it. Don't go all the way up to the back edge though because nobody fills their cup all the way to the top. Slightly curve this. Just gonna go over my, the left or edge of my cup, make sure it's nice and rounded off. And before we do, Final little highlights on our cup, make it look shiny. I'm gonna do a couple of cinnamon sticks coming out. I'll keep using the same brush. Uh, I'll draw them out with just plain brown and then we'll add detail. My cinnamon sticks are gonna just come out here. So I'll start with just a line for one, coming out right here. Now we're gonna use a smaller brush and add a little detail. So we're gonna use dark brown again. So mix your brown and a little bit of blue together and along the shadowy side. Also like up at the very top because the cinnamon usually like is like a tube and it's kind of swirled. And 
we'll add a little bit of this lighter brown. Brown mixed in there, maybe even a little bit of white. Make like a lighter brown for a highlight. Now, my little brush, clean it off, and we're gonna highlight the cup with white. We're just going to add a couple finishing touches. So I thought it would look nice to have maybe a couple leaves kind of drifting along the wind. So we'll do our little leaves. We're just going to use this size brush again. And these don't have to be like perfect leaf shapes. They're going to be like crumply leaf shapes. I'm going to draw them with the brown. By, I'm just going to do like three. So like one, two, three kind of floating. So first one here, grab um, the brown. Just draw like a leaf. This is gonna be the center of the leaf. And we're just gonna draw like just a little jagged, almost like triangular, triangular shape. And the brown at the top. Grab a little bit of red and yellow. We're gonna make an orange again. So this lighter brown, like a burnt orange. And then without even cleaning my brush, I'm gonna just put a little yellow on. And that's my little leaf shape. Just something as simple as that. And I'll do a couple more. Then each one should be, you know, slightly different shaped. Maybe my last one is like an even smaller one or just go ahead and use a smaller brush. Maybe this one. So we'll go back to this brush, and we're going to grab brown and blue again, and maybe even a little bit of red, so we get a really dark shadow color down here. Okay. This, we're going to go right under our little pumpkin here, and this is where we can kind of clean up the edges of our pumpkin, and this is just going to kind of go off this way. this also under our coffee cup. We're going to take a little bit of white, tiny bit of brown. Mostly just want this to be mostly white. Uh, we are going to spray this with water or dip your brush in water. Wipe most of the paint off the brush. And you could do your steam however, like whatever shape you want. I'm going to do mine like two little curls of steam making a little heart shape. So it's going to come up out of here. Make sure it's very, very light. You want it to be really wispy looking and soft. You can even use your finger to smudge it.
Come here. Oh, come here, baby. Ugh. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video, share it with all of your friends, ring the bell icon so you can be notified and all that jazz. And And if you have any ideas for what we should paint next, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you paint along with me, please let me know and like share your paintings with me so I can see. Um, I do have plans to start featuring some of your paintings in the videos. So if you send them to me and tag me, I will be able to do that. Yeah, and I think we'll be doing some Halloween paintings coming up pretty soon. So this is just our introduction into the autumn, fall season. So look out for more. And yeah. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.